Hi, I'm Jesse Coyle. I was Jay Vine's teammate and road captain through most of his Australian domestic success in the 2019 and 2020 seasons. And I'm going to go into the top five reasons why I think Jay went pro and what we can learn from him. Jay hasn't always had perfect execution, but he's really good at learning from his mistakes. So in 2019, at the Tour of the Philippines, he was going there with GC and stage win ambitions. And he realized very quickly on the first stage that he just hadn't done his heat prep for the extreme heat and humidity that we had in the Philippines. And on the first stage up the hill top finish, he actually finished behind Chris Miller, which no offense to Chris, but he wouldn't be expecting to beat Jay up a climb. So instead of keeping that as a weakness, he actually went away, worked with his coach and turned that into a strength. And he came back in 2020 and we saw at the Sun Tour and also at the National Tweed Tour, which were both hot races, he excelled and it actually became one of his big strengths. So I saw him at the Tweed Tour, he had one of those core body temperature sensors on. So he had obviously gone away, done a bit of homework and prepared himself specifically to improve on his weaknesses, which I think is really commendable of him. Specificity is one of the most basic principles of sports science, but Jay really exemplifies this. So in 2020, he had obviously the big goal of winning Zwift Academy and he also wanted to improve in time trialing. And if you go back on his Strava and look at what he was doing in 2020, it was literally on the trainer, on Zwift, on the road, on his time trial bike. And he had this extreme specific training program, which mentally would obviously be very hard, but it's also very effective. He knew what he wanted to be good at and his training was extremely specific, which I think we can all take something from. So Jay's fueling for his training was actually quite funny. There was a bit of a run, <laughs> there was a running joke in the team for, for a period of time where we thought Jay was single-handedly keeping performance nutrition afloat just with the amount of products he was buying because in his training, he actually didn't really use any solid food. He was using performance gels and performance drink mix. He was always meeting his carbohydrate needs. And I think that was one of the reasons why we never saw him really have a dip in fitness. He was always trending up and it was because he was always fueling his training correctly. Now that might not be for everyone, some people might not have the gut for that or, or, or the taste for that, but he didn't care. He knew the nutrition targets he needed to hit in his training and he was just getting gels and fluids in, which is quite extreme, but obviously effective for him. Jay's training intensity was also quite interesting because if you followed him at the time, he never did these massive weeks. His weeks were always between 15 and 20 hours, which for someone who was training full time wasn't that much, but his intensity was incredible. He was on the trainer's riff race, the next day, on the road, over-unders on his time trial bike. So not doing massive hours, but day in, day out, just doing effort after effort after effort. Um, and that led to some massive, massive increases in his fitness. And that's obviously not for everyone, but it just shows that intensity is extremely important um, and can be just as effective as doing big volume. And the final one here is just Jay's extreme focus on one goal. In the two years that I was his teammate, he had a few different goals. So that was things like Sun Tour, Swift Academy, his time trialing, the NRS series. He always had those goals throughout the years, but they were really front and center. So he didn't get distracted by things that some other riders might get distracted with, which is like local racing, bunch rides. He still did them and incorporated them, but he always kept his big goals front and center in his mind. And I think that was really key to his success. He didn't go off for months on these little tangents doing other different things. He was always training for the goals that he knew were gonna be his ticket to the pro ranks. And he did that extremely well. So hopefully there was something in this video that you can take and apply to your own training. If you have any questions about, uh, about Jay or the experience that he had in 2019 and 2020 uh, moving to the pro ranks, just leave them in the comments and I'll answer them.